The water, Rawat Kadash. The water, Kai. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All praises to Ahaya Kisid. That's all praises to Anoki Said. That's all praises to the great I Am loving kindness. Bahashim Yeshaya. Bahashim Motsa, the Lamb. In the name of the Messiah, the Hamasiyak. Shalawam family. This is little son Sabal. Nabaya. Family, today we are going to go deeper on a subject that we have already covered. As a matter of fact, we're going to go so much deeper on this subject that it's really going to become a different subject. That being said, family, this particular lesson is going to be reproval for a lot of you. And even for me, because like Brother Theo always says, a lot of times what the Father gives me for you, he gives to me first. And so understand that I'm not, I'm not reproving you for something that I haven't already dealt with. So with that being said, family, let's get to it. You guys remember a while back, we had a lesson entitled, Lay Down Your Arms. And we talked about, we talked about um, the importance of not being armed. And we went through it and showed it to you in the scriptures. That was the lesson. That was the lesson that caused me to separate from One Nation, One Power. But now, family, now the Father has given me more on this same subject. But like I said, it's going to kind of take a different appearance this time because there's another level to being unarmed. So with that said, family, Let's begin in the book of John. We're going to the book of John, chapter 5, verses 37 through 40. That's the book of John, chapter 5, verses 37 through 40. It says, And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. So right off the back, we see Messiah speaking and letting the people know that you think you have eternal life in the scriptures but I'm the living word right here in your face and you can't even recognize that so understand it's very powerful what the Messiah is saying right here. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter six and let's read verse 33. That's the book of Matthew chapter six, verse 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You see that? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now we have talked about this verse before, but understand when you are doing this, 
when you are seeking the kingdom first and his righteousness, when you are seeking the right relationships with everything in creation, then is when all these things shall be added unto you. We're not done though. Keep these verses in mind because there is a reason we are reading them. Let's go into the book of Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4 verse 12. That's Hosea chapter 4 verse 12. It says, My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declareth unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to error, and they have gone a hoary from under their God. Family, I read this verse because I want you to understand something. Especially, especially for those of us who are here in what we call the United States of America. Now this does not just apply to America, but understand, understand what happens when you have been blindsided by the spirit, the spirit of whoredoms. We all know, we've talked about before in the past, we've talked about how America is the whore. Understand? America has, what's the word? Inherited all of the, all of the, whoredoms of Babylon. You understand? I'm not going to go deep into that right now, but if you go back, almost back to the beginning, we talked about those things. And I'm, and I'm saying the beginning of my YouTube channel, we went through those lessons. We've talked about that before. So most of us on here who have been here understand that America is polluted with whoredoms. But here's what I want you to understand. For us here that have been living, have grown in America, in this society, and in like societies around the world, growing in any place where the spirit of whoredoms have prevailed, understand that we have erred. How have we erred? We have erred on a... What's the word? We have erred on a psychological level. We have erred on a subliminal level. We have erred. But look what it says. It says, my people ask counsel at their stocks. You see that? And their staff declareth unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms have caused them to error and they have gone or whoring from under their God. You see, even in our error, we can tell. We can tell when we're off. You understand? We're not done though. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 45. And let's read verses 17 through 25. That's the book of Isaiah chapter 45. And we're going to read verses 17 through 25. It says, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image, 
and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together, who have declared this from ancient time, who have told it from that time, have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say, In the Lord have I righteousness and strength, even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Wow, family. So family, he speaks righteousness. He declares things that are right and in him there is salvation so already family just just based off of this verse alone we can already see who our savior is and how our savior operates you understand but we aren't done family because there's an elephant in the room that has to be addressed. Let's go stay in the book of Isaiah and let's go over to chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46 and let's read verse 1. Isaiah 46 verse 1. It says, Baal boweth down, Nebo stoopeth. Their idols were upon the beast and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy loaden. They are a burden to the weary beast. We're gonna come back to this verse, family. Drop down to verse nine. That's Isaiah 46, verse nine. And let's read verses nine and 10. It says, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Hold that family, we're gonna discuss it. Drop down to verse 13 though. Stay in Isaiah 46 and verse 13. It says, I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Family, let me explain something to you. Let's look back at verse 1 again in Isaiah 46, where it says, Baal boweth down, Nebo stoopeth. These are talking about Babylonian gods. It's talking about their head god, and then it's talking about Nebo. So, Understanding the Babylonian pantheon, understand that Nebo is their Christ-like character. He's nothing like the Messiah, but for them, he would have represented the same type of power and even form and function to a certain degree. Because Nebo was over the word he established that things that are written are true which we know is a lie from the pit of hell 
Just because you write a lie down doesn't make it be the truth. And family, if you have not watched the lesson that we did on Nebo, check that out. We did a whole lesson on Nebo. Just type in my name and Nebo or just go through the videos back in the past. I think it's the videos probably three years old at this point, maybe two and a half years old. I'm not sure, but go back and you'll see that whole entire lesson there. We break Nebo all the way down. But right now, I want you to understand what this is saying. This is saying Nebo stupid for a reason. It's identifying these particular gods because gods with a little g by the way but it's identifying them because this scripture is a warning it is a warning for now the times we are living in and not even just the times we are living in but this scripture could see afar off what was going down you see family Nebo one of the things that Nebo does is Nebo establishes scripture. And this, this particular line of lies is what is, is why you have to have discernment and the Holy Spirit, because we know about the lying pen of the scribe. You understand? Everything that is written is not the truth. You have to be able to have the Holy Spirit and to have discernment. But there is a particular reason why I'm bringing these verses up. And we're going to talk about it. But look what happens. Look at verses 9 and 10. He says, remember the things of old. You all out there that want to know why? Why is the book of remembrance important? You got people out there who think that it's not important. They think that it's not for them. And while it might not be for them in, in a respect or two, just because some people might not be at the point where they're able to take it in right now, they cannot deny the importance of the Book of Remembrance. It's the reason that it's written in Malachi chapter 3. Understand that the book of remembrance is showing us those ancient paths. So when we read in this scripture, remember the former things of old, for I am God. Understand what this is saying. This is saying that he changes not. Understand that he declares the end from the beginning, but he doesn't change. In other words, what worked in ancient times in righteousness will still work today. In this time where Baal boweth down and Nebo stoopeth. Are you hearing me? But look at verse 13 again. It said, I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off are you understanding how important righteousness is because when we seek first the kingdom when we walk in righteousness when we seek the right relationships when we search after the old past when we search to find the old way when we diligently seek are you hearing me family when we do these things it doesn't matter that nebo stoopeth are you hearing me? This is because even though we live in this construct of whoredoms and we have erred, we can tell that something's off and we have but to ask and the father will answer us, is answering us, has answered us, will continue to answer us because this kind of thing happens every day. Are you hearing me, family? You see, family, what I am trying to help you establish right now is just more righteousness. I'm trying to show you the right relationship with the scripture 
the scriptures themselves. We have to have the right relationships with everything, the scripture included. Family, this lesson is titled, unless I change the title before I upload it, my tentative title for this lesson right now is Unarmed and Dangerous. You see, family, we talked before about not bearing arms, but we also have spoken many times about what? About being armed with the scripture. We've talked about wielding, wielding the word as a sword. Oh, we talk about how the word cuts and it does. We've talked about these things, but because of the whoredoms that have gone on around us, the way that we have been perceiving these things has been a little bit off because we ought not be comparing the scriptures to shooting bullets because the scriptures family are not meant to bring harm to anyone. Are you understanding me? The scripture is clear and intent on what it is for and we're going to go into it. But what it is not for is it is not to be weaponized for you to go and tear someone down. That's why we have to walk in humility because pride will have you wielding the very scriptures as a weapon. But Messiah didn't do that to people. The Messiah didn't use the scriptures as a weapon to tear people down. He reproved, but he reproved in loving kindness like his father. We're going to go into it. We aren't done. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 24. Let me show y'all something. Luke 24. And we're going to read. First, let's read verse 27. Luke 24 verse 27. It says, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So, so Messiah was showing, hey, this is me in the scriptures. Like we talked about earlier, the, these things are written of me. Drop down to verse 32. It says, and they said one to another, did not our heart? burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures you see that the Messiah was opening up to them the scriptures here's what that means he was going into those scriptures and breaking those things down giving them more comprehension more understanding on the scriptures Drop down to verse 45, Luke 24, verse 45. It says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see what was happening here? Messiah was going into these scriptures and doing what? Not just giving them knowledge, but giving them understanding with all thy getting get understanding there's a reason that verse is written there but what he wasn't doing he wasn't tearing them down are you hearing me he wasn't weaponizing the scripture but we're gonna talk about it we aren't done Let's go into the book of remembrance of our ancient grandmothers. That's the book of remembrance of our ancient grandmothers. And we're going to go to chapter four and we're going to read verses 31 and 32. That's grandmothers chapter four verses 31 and 32. It says, and I said, Lord, what do all the affairs of salvation have to do with forgiveness? And the Lord said, 
Salvation is when forgiveness removes the effects of sin in the midst of the continuing consequences of sin so that the children of my Father can know Him in the midst of the temporal world. And when people need to be forgiven, there is something about them that is unlike my Father. And because of this, they feel distant from Him. And the removal of the effects of sin brings them to stand clean before Him once again. And thus, reproval is meant to bring repentance. And repentance will bring forgiveness. And forgiveness will restore and refresh and cleanse hearts and souls back into an awareness of the presence of Anoki said. And when you are forgiven, the effects of your sin are removed from your life. And when you forgive others, the effects of their sin are removed from their life. And when you ask me to forgive someone, the effects of their sin are removed from their lives for that specific incident. So family, are you understanding? Are you understanding that this process, this process is one that begins with reproval. Reproval is the key word here. I know it sounds like the key word is forgiveness and it is, but also don't sleep on reproval. Let's go to 2 Timothy family, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and let's read verses 16 and 17. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see that family? So family, scripture is given by inspiration of the Father. And that's it. Understanding the character of the Father, then we understand why he chooses the scripture that he chooses because it's given by inspiration from him. We know his character is what? Loving kindness. We understand that it yields the fruit of the spirit. Look what else it says. It says it's profitable for doctrine and for what else? For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, in having the right relationships. Again, the key word here, family, is reproof. Are you understanding me? So we are supposed to use the scripture to reprove. But that doesn't mean that we have to do that in tearing down. Are you understanding me? We don't have to tear people down. We don't have to weaponize the scripture in that way. Because Messiah didn't do that. The Father doesn't do that. He doesn't strip us down. As a matter of fact, we shouldn't even do that to our own children. We shouldn't tear our children down with our words verbally to where they feel less than. You understand me? I'm talking to somebody that's listening to this right now. If that's you, make a change. Repent and move forward. Find a way to reprove your children without making them feel this small. Reprove your children while making them still feel all the love that they should feel because their importance, their self-esteem shouldn't take a hit because you are reproving them. Now, don't get me wrong. They should understand that what I did was wrong. It's okay for you to be disappointed in your children, but it's not okay to tear their little self-esteem down to shreds. Are you hearing me? And because every child is different, it means some of you have to have a gentle approach with your children than others. 
and you might have to have a gentle approach with a with one of your children over the other child you understand because every child is different anyway not really talking about parenting right now <laughs> we're talking about reproval we're talking about reproval especially that reproval that comes from the scriptures because we don't want to weaponize the scriptures so let's go into the book of remembrance of Melchizedek chapter 8 and let's read verses 159 through 165 that's Melchizedek chapter 8 verses 159 through 165 it says and my eyes were opened up to see the vision of Peida and he was taught by the spirits of the Irkadeshi which came to him from the storehouse of the spirit which is the inheritance passed down to us from his fathers and he taught that there are four kinds of reproval and the first kind of reproval is from Anoki said and it comes Salakia, and it comes in the form of Anoki said calling you to repent for forgetting how much he loves you and for not remembering what a treasure you are to him and his reproval reminds you when you are treated with disdain of the knowledge that in your perfect self you are the most exciting thing that has ever happened to him and that his forgiveness is up to the task and can and will make you clean and restored back to your perfect self by the powers of repentance and his reproval to you being aware of his respect for you and that his wonderful desires for you are attainable and that you and he can attain triumph over evil only to be assured of the fullness of the gift of life and in this way the reproval of Anoki said brings one to a continually present newness of life and his reproval abides in the east and in his walk in the flesh Moza expressed the reproval of his father often and people like Zacchaeus found out how much they were loved and cherished by Anoki said in spite of their sins which knowledge came by their repentance and confession of sin and the second kind of reproval is the reproval of Moza the lamb and his and his kind of reproval is for specific acts or deeds of sin or error that diminish your ability to walk with his spirit because he always desires to walk with you and his reproval is always gentle but sometimes urgent and it is always honest and leads to the center of your need to repent it is wise and considerate and led by the spirit of compassion and they call to love both him and your fellows and his reproval always urges you to do the kind of repentance that is joined with forgiveness and it generates living life in rich happiness and grace without ill slak salakia, without ill will or rancor in the face of the sin to be seen in your fellows and his reproval is what Mosa feels with you in the south and the third kind of reproval is the reproval that is like the Irkadeshi and as I view this their reproval is entirely new to me and I can see that Peyida is focused entirely upon speaking only of the reproval of the Irkadeshi and Moza while upon the earth as a man. Salakia, and Moza while upon the earth as a man taught this kind of reproval also. And the reproval of the Irkadeshi is to call you back into oneness with the Holy Spirits of life in creation and in one another, and most of all in your perfect self, or that is to say, your vision, and into the spirit and presence of the truth by bringing enlightenment and understanding now you see family why it was so important it was so important to get to get what's the word to get understanding you understand 
We're not done yet though. Now family, there is a fourth type of reproval. Let's read about it. Stay in Melchizedek chapter 8 and let's drop down to verse 186. Melchizedek chapter 8 verse 186. We're going to read 186 through 188. 186 through 188. It says, and a person can even endure the fourth kind of reproval, which is the reproval of bad, which is another name for the devil. So this is the reproval of the devil. So it says a person can even endure the fourth kind of reproval, which is the reproval of bad and still feel free flowing forgiveness. And the reproval of bad is full of accusations and blame and rejection and disgust of you with the view that you are totally bad with no good in you. And when you turn the other cheek and repent for the incident because you love them and most of all because you love the Lord and you feel with him all that he had to feel with the one offended and you have compassion on him and them, then the feeling of grapes is your fortress and the Lord forgives you and you need nothing more now or in the future and you and the Lord together can resolve any issue in any case and you are able to pray effectively for those who despitefully use you and the forgiveness of our hero Moza triumphs forever because you have resolved the issue completely inside yourself with him oh happy day and it came to pass that I beheld with you that all of the of the reprovals of bad are filled with the sounds of death and can be overcome and answered with the sounds of life and the sweetness of an innocent heart and the sweetness of an innocent heart. So do not return sounds of death, but return good for evil, even if only in your heart. Wow, family. So family, that just said that that uh, the feeling of grapes is your fortress. And so I want you to read this. We're going to go and we're going to look at, we're going to take a look at um, Stay in Melchizedek chapter 8. And we're going to read verses 173 and 174. That's Melchizedek chapter 8 verses 173 and 174. So y'all can see why it mentions grapes. It says, and once again, Peida opened up to them the loving spirit of life that made the grapes to grow and prosper. And he told them the definition of grapes, that the loving creator who made grapes put into them, sorry, that the loving creator who made grapes put into them could strengthen their trust to be taken care of by Moza when one finds themselves to be afraid of the dominance of evil. And they all knew they were under such dominance. And he told them that the loving kindness of the creator, Moza, was in everything surrounding them in creation. And it is known as the Irkadeshi. And the grapes feel the assurance of his presence can bring trust that he will deliver you from evil and from oppression and bondage and that he can be trusted to guide them to be holy and secure in the face of pride and crudeness. And I wondered if any of them had escaped after that. And so that's, that's the seer wondering if any of them had escaped from that situation. However, I read this so you can understand what grapes feel. Understand that a knowledge of the Messiah being in and through all element, a knowledge of him being with all of the Irkadeshi is protection and will protect you. Are you understand now why it says that grapes can be your fortress? You see, family, the lesson that preceded this one, where we talked about um, not bearing arms, not using weapons. Understand, family, that we are, we don't have to have weapons to feel safe. We don't need that because 
we have the Messiah in and through all element because it is by him that all things consist. Are you hearing me, family? So understand how important this reference to grapes is, even to your own protection. You understand? Now, family, I want you to understand how important, before we get out of here, I want you to understand how important reproval is. And we've talked about this before and we've read the verse we're getting ready to read already before. When we went, when we did our lesson about the, about the, um, what's it called? When we did our lesson about the qualities of spirit, we, we went through those seven qualities of spirit, but we're about to go through one of them again so you can understand what's going on here. So family, let's go into the book of our ancient grandmothers, the book of remembrance of our ancient grandmothers. And we're going to go to chapter eight and read verses 23 through 25. That's the book of remembrance of our ancient grandmothers, chapter eight, verses 23 through 25. It says, and the sixth of the seven is you must learn to love repentance and be comfortable with all forms of reproval. You see that? So not just the first three forms of reproval. Although we should try to deal with those first three forms in our active reproval, what we should not do is, is, is try to reprove like the devil reproves through all those accusations and, and tearing down of people. You understand? We shouldn't be weapons that way. We talked about not weaponizing the scripture, but don't even we weaponize yourself. Change the way that you think that you relate to people because you ain't got to show them that side of you. But look what it says. Be comfortable with all forms of reproval because even that bad reproval, we can endure that. We can we can grow from that. But let's finish reading this. It says, and the sixth of the seven is you must learn to love repentance and be comfortable with all forms of reproval, enough to look for it wherever it can be found. And in order to love repentance and earnestly seek reproval, one must view reproval and repentance to be having an intimate relationship with Moza the Lamb for the purpose of changing those things in your life to better express the desires Anoki said has for you during the living of your gift of life. And those with pride view reproval and repentance as debasing or insulting. But the children of his right hand consider it to be exalting and find fulfillment to know the truth and respond to it with holiness of heart. And know that it is this very process of reproval and repentance that prepares you to be effective in your encounters with Moza the Lamb. And that process is essential to prepare you to, in the end, stand before him clean and unashamed. And those who are found to be Salakia and those who are found seeking reproval in this way will rejoice in his presence in this life and in the one to come. And they will find that in the flesh, they can truly cross over. And all this is because Moza the lamb is the only means whereby man can be forgiven and made clean before Anoki said. And know that reproval followed by repentance, supported by his spirit, will of a certainty lead to a rich relationship with both the creator and creation and those who are afraid or threatened or angry because of approval are seen by him to be unwilling to know him and we cannot feel the love of those we have chosen not to know nor can we love them you see that family so reproval reproval is so important it's, it's important to the process 
that brings us to standing clean before the Father. Reproval, repentance, and forgiveness. So family, don't weaponize the scripture and don't weaponize yourselves. You understand? I hope that I've given you all something to think about. I hope if the shoe fits, you will wear it. If this was reproval for you in any way, please, please implement these changes. And if you have a testimony about it, please put it down in the comments. Oh, I just remembered. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See, I said it. <laughs> so y'all like this, y'all share it. And please subscribe if you're not subscribed already because it helps the algorithm and all of that. With that being said, family, remember that I love each and every one of you. The water, Kai. All praises to Anoki said, Bahashim Motsa, the Lamb. This is Little Son Sabal Nabaya saying much love and much Shalawan.